Hello. In our last session, we started working with string. We started working with actually a string object. Okay, so this is the markup we created to demonstrate strings in JavaScript. So here, as we know, we enter here. Here, this is going to be containing a text, a paragraph or more than one paragraph text in this area. Here, we want to search a particular string within this text. I want to enter a word here. This word or group of words I would like to search in this text box. Okay, so here functionality something should be like this. As long as there is no text here, these three should not be getting highlighted. Okay, so I mean these two, these three should not be getting highlighted. Search, search lost occurrence, demonstrate replace function. So they should not be getting highlighted in the same manner we have written code. So whenever key is up, in such cases, these are going to be getting here enabled. The two, whenever you have in this some text, if it is empty area, these will not be getting highlighted. Okay, so these are right now actually disabled. By default, these are disabled. Whenever we enter some text here, what happens? These get enabled. Similarly, using reverse word, reverse words, here whatever we type, they are going to be reversed. And one more thing, what we do here, we try to validate email. We are going to validate email. Email validation also, we are trying to do in this. Okay, then similarly here, show subscript and superscript. We are trying to use here few string functions. How string functions can work, I am trying to demonstrate to you with this. Okay, string is a predefined object. We have so many methods as far as string is concerned like to uppercase, to lowercase, trim function, search function, uh, similarly index of, lost index of, length property method. So it has so many methods using which we can manipulate the strings. Apart from that, there are certain static methods with the string. Two string we have, we can convert into string. Okay. So similarly, there can be other methods also with the help of that I mean, we can perform operation on the given string. We may not use any particular object of the string. It can be generally working. So in such cases, we use actually static methods. But when we work with particular piece of string object, in such cases, we use instance methods. So there are two types of methods. One is instance, other one is static. Static methods do not require any object. Using string class name itself, we try to do it. But as far as instance methods are concerned, we require string object. Using string object only we do. Okay, now let us open the code and see here what we have written. And one other thing, here we are using regex. Regex basically a regular expression. So using regular expression, we can, I mean, search for the given string. At the same time, we can even validate the strings. Whether the string is matching a pattern or not, we can identify with the help of the regular expressions. For that, we use a regex object. Now come into source here and see. First of all, this is going to be the markup. We have a markup on the top. First thing is what here? Get character code of A. Okay, once again, I am reviving this. We are going to get the character code of A here. So this is what inline function, the inline JavaScript code. So within on click itself, I'm writing JavaScript code, which is nothing but here inline alert apple zero dot care at five. So it should give you here the value a is at zero, p is at actually first position, second p is at second, I mean um, a is at zero position, p is at first position, second p is going to be at the second position, l is in the third position, e is in the fourth position, and zero is at five fifth position. So whenever we try to get the character code of 0, it should give us 48. Let us see first of all whether we get 48 or not. So get character code of A, it is giving us 48. Using alert, I am displaying. 
Next step is what? We need to enter some text here. Then followed by, first of all, reverse the words. What code is written in the reverse words? Let us see. So, reverse words, where it is, where is the markup available? Here, this is the markup. Reverse words is going to be the value on the button, split text. We are calling the function called as split text there. So, where is split text? Is it here? It's not here. So, therefore, go into split text and see how it is going to be working. This is the JavaScript function. We, are, we have written here. This we are going to invoke. This we are going to invoke when we click on the button. On the button, what is the caption we have? So, that is what reverse words. So, using this split text, we are going to be reversing it. Fine. What code is written? C. Where words. As we know, JavaScript is actually a dynamically typed language. We don't specify any type of data before the variable name. Where words, so this can accept any type of data. So which are valid for JavaScript, it can support any type of data. As we know, numbers are one type, then similarly string is another type, date is going to be one more type, like objects we have, one more thing is arrays. All these we can actually have with the JavaScript. Now here where words equal to document dot get element by id ta is what text area it's the id of the uh, i mean text area you can see here this is text area so its id is what ta number of rows are 10 number of columns are 60 now into this we enter text okay so here what we do exactly we are reversing we are going to reverse that by using the split test functionality here so where words equal to document dot get element by id ta dot value this gives you a string object so document is what it is a it is top level it is nothing but body you can say so in the body we are searching for an element called as ta so when you look at actually the html body or html page it is going to be it's containing actually number of other objects in that so using here document object model it's called as dom document dot get element by id ta so with the help of the id of the element we get hold of the object that means what we can refer the object from there we are retrieving value so whatever we type it will be returned here so whatever value we are returning we are going to split it split meaning is what we can we split the if, if, it, if it's containing more than one word we split into number of words there so split based on what space normally words get separated with spaces Okay, words they get separated spaces. So whatever words are getting separated spaces, they are going to be split here and they'll be pushed into an array. Into the array, they are going to be getting pushed. Now here see alerts, alert, words got reversed. This is giving message here. Here write document dot get element by id ta dot value equal to empty. What happens here? Document dot get element by id ta dot value equal to if it is empty. I mean we are assigning empty there, sorry. We are assigning their empty then followed by here we try to do this way so let us take alert and here let us try to put it okay so where do we put somewhere here we need to put it we have to put here fine so document dot get element by id ta dot value okay so here now what we do exactly while words dot length greater than zero what we do we try to here I mean retrieve one by one the words here what is happening where words equal to document dot get element by id ta dot value dot split so therefore here we need to write some functionality this way where words dot length words dot length so it can give you how many elements are in that if it is greater than zero then in such cases the code has to be executed okay otherwise it should not execute so otherwise right here else alert no words no words to be reversed no words to be reversed like this we try to display it so there are no words to reverse actually we are trying to display it using alert we do it so whenever if it is containing some words so those words we split and keep in the words that means what the length of the words is going to be more than zero but whenever you don't have any words in the given array so what we do in such cases we just print here alert no words to be reversed like this it should display message for us so here what happens exactly document dot get element by id ta value dot 
split. In such cases, whatever words are in that, they can be getting displayed. So here what we do, we try to use here one more paragraph. In that paragraph, let us try to assign it. Okay, so where is the text area for us? Text area is somewhere here. In the table, we had the text area. In the table, we had text area. So here itself, what we do, one more TR we put. We are going to put one more TR. So in this TR, here, TD, right, array elements. We take like this. So in the second TD, in the second TD, I try to use here some kind of span. I'm going to put span ID equal to this is array elements. I put this as here array elements. This is going to be the span in the span. Let me try to put it. So in the span, I would like to set the values which I have in the array. Okay, therefore here, what I do, array elements I have, come to this piece of code again, here it is split text. Okay, we have to split this particular thing here, we are going to split it. Now, if words dot length is greater than zero, so therefore what we do, anyhow, we try to, first of all, clear the span. So span is containing in this. The span name is what exactly? This is going to be, the span name is going to be array elements. We have here array elements, let us put array elements we are going to put here. Write document dot get element by id. We say like this, get element by id. Then write here. So we try to specify array elements then dot inner text so inner text equal to we just put empty like this we keep it inner text we are going to keep as empty so if the length of words is greater than zero in such cases now we try to assign the data document dot get element by id inner text is equal to let us try to assign the data here what data we assign here this is going to be words automatically this will be shown like this is going to be shown in the square brackets with, with comma separation it will be shown for us so inner text equal to words i kept then after that one by one i would like to reverse it what it does here while words dot length greater than zero document dot get element by id ta dot value equal to document dot get element by id ta t is nothing but text area dot value plus words dot pop one by one we are going to be one one word we are going to be popping up in this we pop up one by one word. So pop up meaning is what exactly removing from the array. Last element will be removed first. So based on that, I'm trying to reverse here. Remember that the string is not getting the, the uh, text is not getting reversed totally. Only words are getting reversed in this. Now try to run this. Okay, view in browser definition. Now next thing is what reverse reverse words we need to we need to work on that. Click on this. When we click on that, it says words got, words got reversed, but there are no words in that. Why it is saying like this? Let us see. Okay, so here, when you go with the split text, based on the space we are trying to split, based on the, uh, this one we are going to split it. We are going to split based on that. Okay, so here, value dot, even try to trim it. After trimming it, try to say split it. Now, what happens once again? Let us see this one here. Now if I click on reverse words, it should not be get reversing actually, it should not reverse. How does this reverse here? Split text we are using, so whenever we go with the split text, based on the space we are trying to reverse it. But as far as text area is concerned, there is no data in the text area. If I put something in the text area, probably it should show. So for that purpose, here what I do, I start debugging this. I start debugging this particular thing here I, with the help of the log I can put here write console dot log okay console dot log I put then followed by here I try to write words dot length okay so words dot length I try to put here in this I am trying to put here words dot length I am trying to put here this as words dot length Okay, so it should be now, 
showing us what are the words available in that. Now click on this reserved words, reverse words. It's not at all working here. Okay, so when we say word start length, the length must be okay. It, it, it works actually, it works. View in browser. Now click on this reverse words. Go to inspect. In the inspect, we go with the console. We go with the console. Now here, click on reverse words. Console is not defined, it says. So it says console is not defined. Therefore, once again, try to look with this. Console. Console, we have written this way. Now try to just render this. Now click on the reverse words. Go with this. I mean, here, inspect, go into the console. Here it says uncaught reference. Console is not defined, it says. Saying that console is not defined here in this. Uncaught reference, console is not defined. This is giving us a message here. So here, therefore, once again, try to write console.log we use. Lower case, just try to once again view in the browser. Now when I go with the inspect element here, I go with the inspect element. Then here, I go into console, click on the reverse words. It says words got reverse. How this is going to be one? This should not be one in fact. So from where we are getting element number one, length is given as one there. So instead of length, I try to print it. It's showing the length as one. Okay, so length is one. It's saying there how this can be one. Let me try to print here the words. What words are in this? Let me print in this. I can know with that. Okay, now here inspect. Go to the console. After that, click on reverse words. It says here. It is empty string. What we are getting here, it is empty string. So therefore, in the code itself, there is some problem for us. Let us try to modify code. Okay, so here, what exactly we try to do is, we cannot simply split this. Before splitting, we need to use some if condition. Right here, if condition, then followed by document dot get element by id dot value dot ring dot length, we should use here. Okay, dot length we need to use here length if it is greater than zero then in such cases we need to proceed with this okay we need to proceed in such cases now here now this is not at all required we don't require this one here now if it is greater than zero then in such cases we come to this piece of code here otherwise this cannot be working for us. So whenever it is greater than, I mean value dot trim dot length greater than zero, so in such cases we try to reverse it, otherwise we don't reverse. We cannot reverse otherwise that. Now here all the brackets must be closed. This bracket is getting closed here and the here this one is getting closed. So this way what we do, we try to now reverse it. Okay, we are going to reverse this. Now, render this. What will happen? Let us see. So here in the console, we can be seeing it. How many words are in that? We can find. Go to this, then view here, not page source. I want to go with the inspect element here. Now click on the console. Now go with the reserved words. No words to be reserved message we are getting. There is There are no words. That's why it says no words. So now when we click on the reverse words, they are not going to be getting reversed because there are no words. Now let me type here. This is sample text. Now when I reverse what should happen there? It should display text sample is this. It says here words got reversed. Now here you can see this is sample text. 
so this is what basically this is sample text text sample is this so it's getting reversed initially what i gave there i gave this is sample text okay now with the reverse words what happened this one text sample is this so this is what actually in the array they have been pushed with the help of pop one by one we are removing it first text is getting popped up and added here sample is getting i mean removed from the array and kept in this here and after that each is getting popped up and kept here this is popped up and this is shown so this way what is happening the strings are getting actually popped up so words individual words are getting popped up from the given array so using that particular pop here i am trying to reverse and i could reverse successfully fine now next thing is what reverse words is working properly now for us so using here split function we could do it we are using split with the help of that we are splitting the given string into number of words based on the space so using space we are reversing it with the help of space we are reversing the given sentence into multiple words okay that is working fine properly but when you don't enter anything and in such cases if you try to reverse it it says no words to be reversed now come to next one if you come to this design here we need to search the, the given string must be search similarly search last occurrence last time when this is occurring we need to find out and similarly we need to demonstrate replace function we need to dem demonstrate replace function let us look code for the search search last occurrence and demonstrate replace function coming to this piece of code now here let try to do with the reverse sorry not reverse first thing is what here we need to look at the change button status these button status is getting changed so this button status is getting changed so for that where is the code let us see if you come to change button status if you look at this change button status the code is written in this here this is the very first one function change button status so here what is written in document dot get element by id txt search dot value dot trim dot length greater than 0 that means if it is containing the search text box if it is containing any word in such cases the three buttons are getting enabled here search btn dot disable equal to what we write false when disabled is false it means it's uh, when disabled is false it means it's enabled so we are disabling i mean we are enabling the three buttons by setting disabled equal to true property true value now here otherwise what happens whenever there is no text available in such cases we make this enabled equal to false or disabled is true so whenever there is no text available in the text box it actually gets disabled otherwise when there is text in that it's going to be enabled so like this by setting disabled equal to false we enable by setting disabled equal to true we disable it so like this this is going to be working but in response to what event this is actually working for us it is working in response to here if you come to this it is in response to the event event is going to be on key up whenever you press on keyboard key there are going to be three events when is key down then key press and key up so using key up we are trying to achieve this whenever we type any keyboard key so whenever the key you are going to release in such cases what happens this is going to be firing for us this event is going to be firing this function will be called in such cases change button status we are going to call now let us see how that is working now here see by default these are disabled search is disabled search lost occurrence is disabled demonstrate replace function is disabled now i type here some a in such cases they are now enabled if you delete it they are going to be disabled they got disabled okay now i enter some apple here after that how the uh, replace function is working let us see original text is nothing replace text is also nothing we don't have any original text or replace text now here let me put apple is a fruit okay now here in the place of apple i want to go with the mango demonstrate replace function what happens now in this apple is a fruit so we are is a fruit like this it's giving so apple is getting replaced in this what is happening here 
VR is a fruit. So apple is getting replaced with VR. Otherwise, what I do? I remove this. I am going to Hyderabad. I write like this. I am going to Hyderabad. I write. Now here, in the place of am, I would like to write. I, I just want to check here am. So am will be replaced with br because we hard coded that. If you click on this demonstrate replace function, I am going to Hyderabad. It says, and what it says, replace text. We are going to Hyderabad. Like this, this has changed it here. I am changing it to br. So like this, what we do exactly? We can find and replace using here demonstrate replace function. We are you, we are finding it and we are replacing it. How that is working? See. So when we click replace text. The function replace text we need to invoke here, where txt equal to document dot get element by id txt sets dot value. Next thing is what here txt comma gi. Gi is global and i is going to be here in this case insensitive insensitive use here. Next where txt replace equal to document dot get element by id ta dot value replace reg expression comma vr. So wherever you type i am, it should be getting changed with vr. Okay, like that we need to search here. Then alert original text document dot get element by id ta dot value. Then forward by will be replace. What is happening to that? You can find out. Then document dot get element by id ta dot value txt replace it. So whatever text we replace, we are showing back in the text area. So like this, this replace text is working. This is working that way. This is what exactly replace text. Function we have written. We are calling in response to this button click. When we click on this button here, which button that is? Demonstrate replace function. We are trying to demonstrate it. So with the help of this function, we are achieving this. You need to see all these carefully, and in the same manner, you should actually imitate. You should practice. See, I am seeing with learners, particularly uh, with with many many youngsters after finishing their either B Tech or say. That MS, they want to get a job. So for that, they depend very much on Google. So they think that always code is going to be available for them in the in the Google. Probably some kind of help you can get. Probably they can show you some examples. But exactly the code cannot fit. Even when you search like that with Google, you need to try to understand that. You need to apply your mind. Then you understand. Otherwise, it's not possible to make things like that. So when you have time, little time, just try to focus. Then try to understand all these concepts. Then you can become really a successful programmer, and you become asset for the company. So that way you try to think. So I mean, these these days people are thinking that after they, after getting job they can learn. They are thinking like that. It's not any data entry work. Okay. So it's not any typing work. Remember, it is the work related to mind, related technology. Unless you have very good hold over technology, definitely you cannot succeed. Few people may be succeeding. Okay, that is absolutely wrong concept. Whatever you are thinking is totally wrong. So try to learn, try to understand all these in detail. Then definitely you can be a successful programmer. Fine. Next thing is what here? We try to look into the other one, validate. So before validate, we try to look into here. We are going to look into searching. So first thing is what here? Here we have. I mean, search. We look into the search here. This button, with this button, we try to search. We are going to search it. Search here, string. Search string with the help of that, we try to search. Now come to search string where it is written. Okay, this is going to be search string. One by one, it's going to be searching the given string. Already I demonstrated that. So one by one, what it's doing? It is actually finding. Then after that, it is pushed into The array into the array. Array is what exactly positions is array into the array. It's getting pushed. Then after that, at the end, it's popping up one by one. In the reverse manner, it's going to be shown for us. Very last word you type is going to be popped first. Now try to render this here. So how the code is written? Once again, see. Where txt equal to document dot get element by id txt search dot value. And this is what this is going to be an array. It's array and array we declare like this. Where positions equal to empty array that is next where txt equal to document dot get element by id txt search dot value okay then here where pos equal to document dot get element by id ta dot value dot index of txt comma zero so from the zero position in the given 
I mean text area you are trying to search. Now what happens you get the position here, you may be getting here the position. So position means what exactly here where the string substring is found you are going to get its position in the given text area. So that may be 0 or greater than 0 if the word is found. Otherwise it cannot do anything. So therefore what happens here while PO is greater than or equal to 0 in such cases what we do we push into positions. Position is an array, we are trying to push into array there, into array we are pushing. So this is going to be something like actually stack operation. Stack operation like that we are going to do, we are going to push. Whatever element you put latest that is going to be in the top of the array. Top means what in the last index, it is going to be the last index. So array is not going to be a stack here, but you can use array as a stack. You are going to just push. Push is going to be putting into array index. Okay, so here positions of 0 will be very first, then 1 is going to be next, then 2 is going to be the other one. So this way what happens, dynamically you can be adding elements. Initially you don't have any element in that, but with help of the push you are going to add elements into that. Positions dot push, PYS. Okay, so for the PYS is what exactly? It's a numeric position, numeric value. So the given uh, text, whatever you are trying to search in the main text area, so if the uh, text is found, whatever text you are searching in the main text area, if the text is found, whatever you are trying to search, if it is found in the text area, so its position will be added to position C here. It may be at 0 is position, 1 position, 2 position, depending on the text. So that will be added to the positions array. Only positions we take. Then after that what we do? We try to do like this. P O is equal to document dot get element by id T A dot value dot index of T X T. Again what the same text you are trying to search once again. It may be recurring number of times. Therefore, what you write here? PoS. PoS gives you current position. Current position plus how much we do? Uh, how much we take here? TXT dot length plus one like this. So from the current position, we are adding here text length. Suppose you are searching for actually STR. So STR length is how much? Three. From the current position, we add three. Then from uh, to that we add one. Uh, to add one more. So from there we try to search again the given string. So this way repeatedly we are going to be searching it. Repeatedly we are going to be searching. So here as long as the position is greater than or equal to 0 the loop continues. After that what we do? We come to this point here then we are going to pop up. Just I want to show you how we are popping up. I want to demonstrate pop that's why I am trying to show you. So here it is going to be showing the very last element. It shows positions also one by one the positions are also shown for us. Initially, what are the positions? How one one element is getting removed from the array, you can understand from this. Now try to view in browser. Here write, apple is a fruit, banana is also a fruit. Okay, but Apple is a costly fruit, when compared with banana, like this we have written. So how many times fruit is occurring I want to find out. So here write fruit, now search. It says 12th position, 36th position, 65th position. Elements are like this. Click on OK. Now says 65. So last element is going to be getting removed. Then it is 12 and 36. After that what happens? It is going to be popping up 36. After that you have only 12. Now click on OK. 12 will be popped up. After that we don't have anything. So like this you have here 12, 35, 34 and 65. Something like that we have. Once again, search law, search again, see here, 12, 36 and 65, 65 is getting popped up, next 36 should be getting popped up, okay, then 12 should be getting popped up. So like this, one by one we are searching, from left to right we are searching. Now with the help of the search lost occurrence, we should get 65. It says, so free lost time occurred at position 65, it is saying here. So it is occurring lost at 65 position, it is saying like this. Okay, then it should be fruit we said and with this we try to see. It says fruit lost time occurred at position 65. 
in the 65th position last time it's occurring so with the i mean last index of we can find out last i mean where in the given string last time the given substring is occurring we can find out so here therefore we use here index of operator as well as other thing is what last index of operator similarly we can use search also search is going to be more powerful even you can use with search say the regular expressions you can use regular expressions with search have you used anywhere let us see here i think in the replace text not replace text somewhere i think we have used it let me show you that okay let me show you in this not change status here search string replace split text in the split text i think we are using search okay not in the replace where do we use it we are not using it we are not using the search actually search is also function something similar to index of and last index of you can use search last occurrence replace text we are using like this now here let us validate the text let us try to validate the given text so here right we have used a email pattern email validation we are trying to do so this is called as here email pattern in this pattern the email should occur otherwise it is not going to show it as a valid email so where is the code written see in this here somewhere we have written code validate email var em equal to document dot get element by id email dot value then here we are forming actually email pattern var rg equal to new reg express email pattern comma ig so we use here if rg dot test of em equal to true that means if it is as per the given regular expression it says valid email otherwise it says invalid email we are using the email whatever we type it in the text in the in the text box we have written email so this is what exactly id is nothing but email so that email we retrieve and try to assign to the em variable then here var rg equal to new reg express email pattern comma ig here so i is nothing but ignore g is for global like this we are searching in the given string so therefore next thing what happens here we try to we try to actually search regular express i mean test it right here if rg dot test em equal to true it says actually valid email otherwise invalid email it's going to say now let us see whether it returns a valid email or not if i enter a valid email i enter here like this a yes, i put like this street trainings at i put just then i try to validate email it says invalid email is not valid email okay similarly i write here gmail only just i put so what happens it's click on this it says invalid email but when i put here dot com it says a valid email it says valid email similarly we just try to put add symbol only what happens let us see so click on email it says invalid email so using that feature you can be validating email you can use you can validate the email so email validation is very very important in the case of forms whenever you are something submitting some data to server so email validation is very very important so we validate email using this feature we use here regular expression here we have a regular expression we define on the top this is nothing but regular expression var email pattern so using this email pattern we are going to be performing it so we created here a regular expression object so using regular ex expression object we are testing it we have taken var em so whatever email you enter it's going to come into em variable and we created regular expression object and here we try to test it if rg dot test em so the given email we are i mean testing with the regular expression so regular expression if it is validating it that means if it is saying it as a valid email then what happens here alert valid email else alert invalid email so like this this is getting validated it's going to validate the email that way okay now next thing is here if you come to design other thing what we do we try to show subscript and superscript how sup and sup are working let us see here this is what we have a button show text in subscript and superscript now for that purpose we use here we try to use here one div id is sup sub it's called sup sub 
that is what superscript and subscript for that I gave an ID. So in that ID, it should read, it should put some text with superscript as well as subscript. Now come to this piece of code here. So show text in subscript and superscript. Come to this piece of code here and see how that's happening in this. Here see, I'm using var chemical formula h plus 2 dot sub. So 2 is getting converted to here a subscript. This is nothing but a subscript. 2 can be treated as an object here. So this is going to be subscript. That means for h2, so on the baseline, just below baseline, 2 is going to be coming. Then when you take s4 plus 4, 4 is also coming below the, I mean, baseline. 2 is coming below baseline and 4 is also coming below baseline. Then here var math formula equal to a, then plus 2 we put here dot sup. So above the baseline now it comes. Similarly, here this 2 also comes above baseline. So here what happened now? Var s equal to 2, var so equal to 4 we have taken. Now based on that, we try to do this particular thing now here. We have written this as here, var s equal to 4, then similarly, var s equal to 2, now we create like this here. m dot inner HTML equal to, bold this is, we are writing h plus s dot, s dot sub. That means what here? 2 will be here, shown as actually subscript. Then s o we write plus s o dot sub. s o is what exactly? s o is going to be here 4. 4 it will be shown as subscript. So h to s o 4 we are getting here. Followed by we use a break here. Then we use here a. Then plus 2 dot s u p we are keeping. That means what a square we get plus 2 a b. Then followed by here 2 dot s u p is based. Uh, I mean once again it's going to be going up. It's going to be p square. So like this we try to use this one here. Here I hard coded everything. I have hard coded here. Now first of all, see how this works. When I click on this, show subscript and superscript, it shows like this H2SO4, then A square plus 2AB plus B square. Like this, this is getting printed. Now here come to say, I mean, instead of hard coding it, let us try to use the variables. Because already we have defined variables on the top, just try to use it. Now equal to here chemical formula we use. Put the chemical formula here, then write plus, then here this should be br. After that we put plus here, then write math formula. Like this we try to use it. We can use this way. Just try to show this in browser once again. Click on the show subscript and superscript. It is displaying here H2SO4, A square plus 2AB plus B square is shown. So like this, here we can use the string manipulation. We are using, we are performing here string manipulation with few string functions. So this way, you need to use string in real world, real time application development. I am going to make some labs for this. In the labs, practically we implement, we create few pages and we try to use the JavaScript. And in next session, we discuss about actually the arrays. Thank you very much.